Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to the video. For those of you who tuned in on Sunday, uh, you'll have already seen this video clip. This is my attempt to grow Valisanaria using cow manure. On the top is gravel and the bottom is gravel, but wedged in between the two, uh, I thought I'd try out cow manure and see uh, if it would grow Valisanaria. Now, I know Valisanaria uh, takes in an awful lot of nutrient through its leaves, but it does need its roots as well. It does gather a fair amount of nutrient that way. So I figured, well, cow manure is quite rich. Uh, it is sterilized manure, so there isn't any pathogens or anything in it. And I thought, we'll see how it did with this plant. Because this, this is an easy to grow plant. I mean, there's no difficulty I've had with it with any of the situations I've set it up in. Uh, I've done it in just straight gravel. I've done it in, of course, uh, gravel with uh, potting soil. And that works really, really well. But this one just isn't thriving. I've repotted, as you can see here now. This is now with a gravel on the top and bottom. And my usual soil mix I've been using all along with all the other plants. And I figured, well, we'll see if it will come back. Now, as far as if you think there might be a nutrient lack because of what was in the water, uh, this is also the place I took out all that Luigia that was growing really well in a pot as well. Now, as a comparison, this is... Uh, just another pot. It's got valisanaria in it. Uh, top gravel, bottom gravel, and soil in between. And you can see how lush this is. This is in exactly the same uh, bank of aquariums. It also has guppies and shrimp and all the same sort of organisms. It gets the same water changes, everything. The only difference is it has soil. Now, I have some ideas about this, and... Keep in mind that this is just anecdotal. Uh, it's not, there's no science behind it or anything. It's just my experience growing this stuff and uh, what I saw while I was doing this. So as I pull this apart, I mean, you can see the amount of difference in the roots here. Now the other big difference, and these are two, uh, well actually two differences. First off, the smell. Uh, this does not smell at all. I pulled it apart like this and it was... Um, just as if I had uh, like stirred up the gravel in the bottom of an aquarium. There was no anaerobic component to it at all. I know I have had some with soil before, if I, the soil bed's a little bit deeper, but in this particular case there wasn't anything. And the other thing is, I noticed when I was doing this, I'm not sure if it's going to show up here on the video, uh, but there were scuds uh, in this. They were crawling everywhere. And uh, that is another difference between this and the cow manure one. When I opened up the cow manure, or sorry, I had dumped out the cow manure pot to repot that, uh, it was definitely anaerobic. Uh, anyone who has, you know, had anything go anaerobic before, it is a very distinct smell. And I think because of that, it had, well, you saw that there was no roots at all. I think those roots just simply wouldn't grow in that environment. Again, Valisanaria does take in a lot of nutrient through its leaves, but its roots are, well, they're necessary. I mean, the plant wouldn't have them if uh, they weren't uh, an you know, intricate part of it, not just something just to hold it in place. And the other thing I noticed, there were no scuds whatsoever under there. I mean, obviously they can't live in an anaerobic environment, so uh, they just simply didn't go down in there. I don't know if they have any positive effect on the growth of plants. I want to assume that they didn't because all they really do is uh, nibble on, well, bits of plant material that's rotting and that sort of stuff. Maybe that does provide some sort of uh, positive benefit. I, I don't know. It's just something that I noticed and I thought I'd mention it to you. Technically, what I should have done in this particular case is divide this into three um, because in short order, this is like this is half of it here. Now, this is going to need to be repotted again in about six months, so I'd rather, you know, stretch it out a bit further. So back to this. This is, uh, well, basically it's, it looks almost like anorexic. Let's just call it that. It is malnourished. Uh, it's not growing well. It was uh, younger, actually, than the other pot. And if you remember also from Sunday's video when I pulled out all that red Luigia, uh, there is a ton of nutrient in this tank. It is a healthy, thriving, growing tank. And, I, well, I pull a ton of that stuff. I mean, this is just what I put back in. And you can see that uh, that plant, or those two plants, I should say, are healthy, they're thriving. Uh, they've got tons of roots everywhere. 
and they're grown in soil as well. I know that soil uh, in these pots does leach nutrients into the water column. Uh, it is not uh, enough that it causes algal blooms or anything along those lines, uh, but it does supply nutrients. So the leaves of this Vallison area plant should have had a sufficient amount of nutrient. Uh, obviously it wasn't getting it. Uh, I am hoping that it is not too far gone that it won't come back uh, once repotted like this. Uh, we'll have to wait and see, of course. I'll definitely give you updates uh, as time goes on. It is just one of those things. I mean, again, there's no real... I, I didn't take any uh, nutrient tests. I didn't do a nitrate test or anything along those lines. All I can tell you is it was definitely anaerobic underneath. And also, of course, uh, there weren't any scuds. And you know, uh, well, from watching my aquariums and stuff, that I use tons of invertebrates. There's snails, uh, scuds, uh, you can see tons of shrimp going around here as well. And when I pull that out, I mean, actually, when I pull out plants in general, almost always I have a lot of those invertebrates, all of them, uh, that uh, come out, and I see a, a lot of it. In this particular case, none. I mean, there were obviously a few snails on the leaves, but that was about it. Nothing else really showed up at all. So that's it. That's my view on uh, using cow manure. I certainly am not going to use the rest of the bag. I'll just uh, spread it on the lawn in the spring, and we'll uh, let it do its thing there. Uh, it is definitely not worth the effort. I mean, I have used soil uh, consistently, and I've had no issues with it. Every now and then, uh, I might get one that doesn't do too well because I've done something silly. But for the most part, it all grows, and it grows well. And I know I get a lot of uh, comments from people uh, to try out various um, commercial products, uh, aquarium commercial products, I should say. And um, I tend not to because for less than a dollar a year, I get all the soil I need. And I get, uh, as you can see with this uh, last clip of Allison area there, it grows really, really well. And so does Luigia and everything else. I just don't see... Uh, the need to try those out. I mean, you can just put a little bit of gravel and a little bit of soil, and you get perfectly growing plants. I mean, and I can move these around wherever I want. Uh, I know people try root tabs and other stuff like that as well. Like I said, this is as close to free as you can get, and you get good results. I certainly don't want my plants to grow anymore. <laughs> as we saw Sunday's video, uh, that tank was massively overgrown, and it, I don't really prune as much as I should now. I certainly don't want it to grow even faster. So anyway, leave comments below. Let me know what your experiences are. And uh, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video and bye for now.